If you're familiar with U.S. history, then you've likely heard the adage, kill the Indian, keep the man. It's a phrase that was commonly used when government officials were forcibly separating native children from their families and forcing tribes to assimilate into Western culture. While the atrocities committed during this time are well documented, it's a place fiction doesn't often dare to go. While the boarding schools may not be the focus of this tender land, it does provide a bit of a backdrop for the story. Lucy Steiger, librarian with Siouxland Libraries and the leader of the Kelloland Living Book Club is with us today. She's here to help us all unpack the story of Odie and Albert, two white orphans at the center of William Kent Kruger's award-winning book, plus what we can look forward to hearing all about the next selection for our new book club, our next book club. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so interesting book. What were your yeah. thoughts? I really liked it. I mean, I knew kind of going into it, it's not going to be a super happy story, but it was still kind of just sweet how they found their family. You know, um, Odie and Albert, who are orphans, and then um, Emmy, who's this other orphan girl, mm -hmm. and Mose. I think he was like my favorite character. And just the fact that he was mute, but he learned sign language and can, can communicate. And um, it was just, it was a sweet story. I mean, it's obviously tough to. It's tough to start out, particularly mm -hmm. in that space of the boarding school. Yes. Um, you know, they've lost their parents, and they... They're physically abused. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. this is real. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a pretty... It's a pretty tough spot to reconcile. Yeah. You know, with... But, but the boys... It's a, I thought it was well written. It was pretty easy to kind of get absorbed mm -hmm. into the story. Yeah. Um, I kind of got, got caught up a little bit in sort of the parallels um, with the Odyssey mm -hmm. that were being made. Yep. You know, I really like literary connections and parallels like that. Yeah. I know there's a lot of like, you know, Tom Sawyer and stuff in mm -hmm. here too, but. The, I mean, his name is Odysseus. Yeah, yeah. His right. His full name is Odysseus, yep. But then I kept thinking of him as Buck, because that's the name he goes by to try to hide who he is. Mm -hmm. um, and even um, even Albert, when he goes by no man, because he's not a boy, nor a man. Yeah, nor man. Yep. And mm -hmm. there's a similarity with, you know, nobody in, in mm -hmm. the Odyssey too, and like the, the way that Odie is kind of called by music and he follows it a lot, yeah, which is sort of the harmonica. tale of sirens mm -hmm. in, the, in, in that story too. So I kept seeing a lot of parallels Yeah, and there. just all of the different like stops they make and they find mm -hmm. this person and then for a while they get along with this person or this other one. And it's, it's just so interesting, all these little tales. And then at the same point too, you know that um, he makes it out okay because he's telling this story as an old man because mm -hmm. he references, well, when I was in the war, when I was in my 20s or whatever it is, it's like, okay, good. So he makes it through it. But um, the other characters, you don't really know what happens to them. So it kind of when there are some contentious moments, it's like, ooh, this is what happens. And, uh, you know, he has to make some hard choices a lot of times. And mm -hmm. he, he makes them pretty swiftly. Yeah. He's kind of like, no, nope, this is what I got to do. 13 year old. Right. Like, yeah. I got to, that's what I got to do. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of hard to even think about, too, because often when I read anything that has children at the center yep. of it, I sort of start thinking about my own children uh -huh. at that age. And like, like, can I imagine Would they if survive they would out survive in the river? <laughs> right. Like, uh -huh. it seems so challenging, right? Yeah. I don't know. Um, obviously, fiction, but it's interesting, too, to take place in Minnesota. I like things that have sort mm -hmm. of a... I don't know, local kind of flavor, yep. you know, Mankato. There's things that we're familiar mm -hmm. with. There's I think you mentioned Sioux Falls in here, too. Right, so it's mm -hmm. kind of, I always like that. It's kind of interesting to have something that takes, like, some local flavor to yep. it. Um, but obviously it took place quite a while ago, too. Yes, I think in the... 30s. Yep. Depression, Depression dust bowl era. era. Mm -hmm. So, so I, you know, it went pretty fast for me, too, just because the reading's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're looking for, I mean, I guess I wouldn't call this a traditional beach read, but... No. I yeah. think it's light, and, or it's the way that it flows is yes, fast and quick an enough. Read. It's an easy read. Mm -hmm. It sort of has maybe more of a, you know, crime. And it's historical fiction too, which I know is a really popular genre. Um, so I think there is a lot of appeal to this book. And mm -hmm. it's been well. It's been well received. Yes. So mm -hmm. very interesting. I haven't read any of his other books. I haven't either, but I think I might want to read uh, Ordinary Grace because I think he wrote Ordinary Grace first, and this was originally supposed to be kind of like a sequel okay. or a um, follow-up to that book, but then as he was writing it, um, just changed course. Yeah, he seems like he does that. I read also mm -hmm. that he originally had intended it to really be like a Tom Sawyer mm -hmm. homage, but as he went through, he really went 
a little bit more of the way of the Odyssey, mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting. Okay, let's talk about the next book. Yep. So the next book is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. Um, so this guy, he wrote A Man Called Ove, is probably his most popular work, and also Bear Town. Um, and this is his latest one, which he still was published like three or four years, 2020, 2020, okay. Yeah, and, but isn't it, mm -hmm. yeah. But is it's his it, newest book. Oh, no, that's not right. Sorry. I think it was, was it originally written in another language? Yes. So yeah. all of his books are written in Swedish. Swedish first. And then um, they're translated by the same person, which is nice, because then, because I've read most of his works, okay. and so there's that continuity. Right. Um, so this story is about, I think it's eight people who, they're at this, like, open house for an apartment, and then a bank robber comes in mm -hmm. and kind of ends up holding them all hostage. And it's just a situation um, where you learn about all these different people's lives and how they all kind of interconnect. Yeah, but you probably will be surprised, I would think, just from under, like looking at some of the characters. Mm -hmm. It looks like there's some really surprising things. Oh, yeah, there's some colorful characters. Like the characters. characters are very colorful and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of starting out with this bank robber kind of theme, I think maybe will end up being a little bit of a, yeah. of a, of a turn. And there are some like funny moments in this book, too. I'm so I think this is a lighter it. read. This is kind of, I could see this being a beach read. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward to this because I think that it has a lot of characters in it that you can really explore, like the, the depths of the characters mm -hmm. and the different kinds of people yeah. and maybe what their like defining moments are and what yeah, kind he of- He just builds really great characters. What kind of drives them and, you know, who, who, who doesn't know anxious people? Right. <laughs> Like we can, I think, all identify I, I a little can bit relate there. to it. Have you read this already, or are you looking forward yes. to this as a first? Okay. So I've read this one. I've actually read it twice already. <laughs> okay. And you liked um, it enough to read it again? Yep. Yep. It's it's good. Um, definitely. Like the second, the first time reading it though, there's like some twists, and so you kind of miss that. You know, reading it again, but yeah. it's still nice to be able to revisit the characters. There's been a few books that have a lot of characters like this that I have read all the way through and when I finally connect all the dots, I mm -hmm. do wanna like almost turn it over and start reading mm -hmm. it again. Just to um, see if you can kind of notice those little connections before. Yeah, right, re like, revealed. oh, I missed that the first time where mm -hmm. it wasn't quite revealed, so I just kind of glossed over it maybe, but once it all comes out, you kind of think, wow. Yeah, those are like really nice. Well written. Okay, mm -hmm. well, I'm looking forward to it. Thank yeah. you for being here. Yeah, thank you.